When you get into your 50s, the age at which most people think about retiring, you may feel that for you, retirement could not seem further away because your retirement pot is nowhere near as big as you expected it to be at this stage of your life. But I want to show you just how quickly you can turn things around and why if you do the things that I'm about to show you, you should expect to double your retirement pot in the five years leading up to retirement all without needing to save any more money than you already are. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. There are three reasons why the final five years before retirement is where all the magic happens. The first of those is compound growth. Einstein famously once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. It's a simple concept, but one that the human brain struggles to visualize. I'll demonstrate this with an example. If I offered you a million pounds today, or one P that doubles in value every day for 30 days, which would you choose? One million pounds is a huge amount of money. But do you think that one P that doubles every day would be worth more than a million pounds after 30 days? Well, Obviously it is, because otherwise I wouldn't be using this as an example, but let's just look at that journey. On day one, you'd have 1p, day two, 2p, day three, 4p. By day 10, you'd have five pounds, not great. By day 15, so you're halfway through, you still only have 163 pounds. By day 20, a third of the way through, 5,242 pounds. By day 25, 167,000 pounds, which is a big increase, but with only five days left, we're still a long way off a million. But this is where it gets nuts. By day 30, it would have grown to £5,368,000. This gets me every time. When you break it down into the individual steps, it seems obvious. It doubles on that final day, adding £2.6 million. But it's the compounding effect of that growth rate day after day that really catches you by surprise. But at first, it's barely noticeable and you would be forgiven for thinking that nothing is even happening. But suddenly you get all of this explosive growth right at the end. But that's just the perspective because of course it's been growing at the same rate all along. Many things in life are as a result of compound growth. Small incremental changes that at first don't seem like they're having much effect but snowball into huge results over time. The most obvious example of these is with investing. Of course you're never going to be able to find an investment that doubles in value every day. Investing is a much longer term game where you're going to see results over decades not days but exactly the same process applies. This is the return of the MSCI World Index, a global stock market index going back to 1975. If you had invested 10,000 pounds at the start of this, so 48 years ago, that would now be worth 1.7 million pounds. We can see by the similar shape of this graph that this is as a result of compound growth. Over this period, the global stock market has grown at an average rate of a little over 10% per year. But for the first few years, or even decades, it may have seemed like you're making no progress at all. Ultimately, a 10% return on 10,000 pounds isn't that exciting. But 10% on a million, well, that'll get your attention. And it's as you approach retirement that you actually start to feel the effects of compound growth taking hold. But even with a 10% growth rate, we're not going to double our money in five years. So how is this possible? Well, it's actually a very simple formula that I'll demonstrate with an example. John is 55 and between him and his wife, they have 200,000 pounds invested, 150,000 pounds in pensions and 50,000 pounds in ISIS. And they want to double that by the time that they're 60. What are the two factors that are going to make this happen? Number one, investment growth. And number two, how much they can save between now and then. Over this time period, the global stock market has grown at a compound rate of just over 10% per year. Remember, that's not 10% every year. 10% is an average, and the actual journey to that return has been very bumpy. So let's assume that John is not as lucky or is invested more conservatively and achieves an average annual return of 7%. This is the formula. If you want to double your money over five years with a 7% investment growth rate, you would need to save 10% of the value you started with each year. So if you're starting with 100,000 pounds, you would need to save 10,000 pounds each year. 
If you're starting with £200,000, you would need to save £20,000 per year and so on. Think about how much you have invested right now in pensions, ICEs, and other investment accounts. If you want to double that over the next five years, you would need to save 10% of that figure each year. Year. Of course, that's by no means guaranteed and will depend on how you're invested and what happens in the markets, but it's a simple guide that you can use. Now, you might be thinking, great, James, that's a neat little formula, but how the hell am I supposed to save £20,000 per year? Well, this brings me to the second reason why the final five years of retirement are so powerful. Most people in their 30s, 40s, or even early 50s feel nervous by the fact that they are not able to save as much as they would like. Maybe you've got kids at home that are costing you an arm and a leg, or you're still paying off your mortgage and you don't have much left over at the end of the month. This can be demotivating. It can make you feel like you're being left behind. But you need to realize that this is totally normal. Most people find themselves in this position in the middle of their lives when their costs are high and income is tight, especially now given that mortgage rates have gone through the roof. But there will come a time, probably in your 50s, where you are in your peak earning years when you finally pay off that mortgage and your kids leave home and you find that you are able to save more than you ever thought was possible. Let's say that John has just finished paying off a £200,000 mortgage that was previously on a 4.5% interest rate. He would now have an extra £1,100 of spare monthly cash flow. That's £13,300 per year, a big chunk of his £20,000 target. And I'm going to show you how he can now get to that target without having to save any more money. Because it's here, in those last five years of retirement, that pensions really come into their own. In the UK, a private pension is the most tax-efficient tool that you have for building wealth. The only downside is that you can't access that money until 55 at the earliest. But John is already 55, so that's not a problem. So for John, he wants to be putting as much into his pension as he can. If John made a £13,300 contribution into his private pension, he'd get 20% basic rate tax relief added on top by HMRC, leaving him with £16,660 in his pension. Which is good, but it's still not 20k. So as an alternative way of getting this money into a pension, John could instead ask his employer to sacrifice his salary directly into his pension before he receives it and reduce his take-home pay by £13,300 per year, leaving John with exactly the same free cash flow as when he was paying off his mortgage. But by doing this, not only will he be saving on income tax, but also national insurance, with this additional saving being paid into his pension. Now, this is only possible if your employer uses a salary sacrifice pension, but this is the most common type of pension. And if John did this, by the end of the year, he would have £19,600 inside his pension. £3,000 better off than if he'd made the contribution himself. There's one last tip to get him over that target. By choosing to sacrifice his salary, John is also saving his employer money because they end up paying less in employer's national insurance. So John should ask them if they would be willing to pass that saving on to him and pay it into his pension, which seems fair. Some companies might pass on all of their NI savings. Some might not pass on any at all, but let's assume that they decide to split the difference and put 50% of their tax saving into his pension. This would leave him with £20,958 in his pension at the end of the year. So there we have it just by diverting the £13,000 of cash that he was previously paying towards his mortgage into his pension, John is now able to save an extra £21,000 per year. And with a bit of luck, this should enable him to double his retirement pot over the next five years. But remember, this is in addition to the other savings that he's already making. By default, between John and his employer, he's already putting 8% of his salary into his pension each year, which adds £4,000 to this figure. And we're not done yet. John currently has £150,000 in his pension and £50,000 in ISIS. The advantage that ISIS have is that you can access them at any time. But given that John is now 55 and can access his pension if he needs to, it would be more tax efficient for John to use his ISIS to make even larger pension contributions. To be most efficient, he would need to spread these contributions over a number of tax years and make some contributions in his wife's name. But this would turn his £50,000 of ISAs into £62,500 inside pensions. So after 
Years and years of feeling like he's behind, just saving the default into his pension. In just five years, John is able to turn his £200,000 retirement pot into £250,000. In the last year alone, that has added £50,000 of value. This is why the final few years before retirement are so important and shows just how quickly you can turn things around. What's so great is that all of this is happening without John needing to put aside any more money than he already was. All he's done is divert the cash flows that were going into his mortgage into his pension. But this is where it can fall down. Given that you've probably been paying off your pension for the last 25 years, it's tempting to give yourself a break and maybe spend some of that extra cash that you have, which is fine as a one-off. But if you let your lifestyle creep up and consume that extra cash flow on an ongoing basis, this is not going to work and you are really going to struggle to get your spending back down. With interest rates higher than they have been for a long, long time, more and more of our income is going towards servicing our mortgages. And if there is any silver lining to this, it's that when we do finally pay that mortgage off or when interest rates fall, you are going to have an even larger proportion of your income that you can seamlessly redirect towards investing. In the years leading up to your retirement, you should be dramatically increasing the amount that you have invested, with the majority of this going into your pension. But there is no point putting all of that money into your pension if it is not invested correctly which is why you now need to watch this video here, where I teach you everything that you need to know to assess how your pensions are currently invested and how to set them up for success in retirement. I'll see you then.